Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today we're gonna kind of do uh, a pocket dump, or what I carry today, everyday carry. It's not uh, it's not what I carry every day, but this is what I had today. Uh, worked out really good. I worked on the car, and I worked on a lot of little other projects around the house. So, but first off, we have my uh, handy dandy trusty Streamlight Stylus Pro. This thing's been with me for quite a while. I don't know if you guys can see all that. I don't know how well my GoPro picks this up. But it's been thrashed around in my pocket for quite a while. Uh, it's been loved up on quite a bit. Uh, I do love this light. It's a good light. It's pretty bright. Probably needs some new batteries. I don't even know what I got in here. Let's see. Uh, some Duracells. Probably need to pitch those. Um... I like energizers a lot better than that, but they work. I had uh, one one Duracell break in one of my other flashlights just burst open and ruined the light. So, but uh, it's a great light. I really do like it. It's not the best light, but it's not the worst. It's really light, really easy to use, feels good in the hand. So it's great for finding stuff. So, but that's what I got for my flashlight um... my wallet uh, it's just a plain old black wallet leather I've had it for years and years and just keeps going inside my wallet you know, I have driver's license cash uh... concealed carry cards insurance cards and, uh, numerous discount cards but I also keep a signal mirror no you guys are not seeing my wallet <laughs> But I also keep a signal mirror. So this is just a top survival mirror. I removed the rubber coating. And it just stores inside my wallet in a random pouch. This is a very good item to have in your wallet. In case you accidentally mark yourself in the face with a pen. And you want to check it out and see how bad it is. Or if you just need to look in your eye. Or I don't know. There's a lot of useful things for a mirror. So... But uh, these things are really thin. They're kind of sharp on the edges, so just be careful. But uh, yeah, I just place that inside my wallet. And that stays right there, and it hasn't gotten scratched or anything. It's been in there for a long time. Uh, but next thing is my belt. So this is what I had today. This is just a, a Dickies canvas belt. One of those slide lock ones. It's not the greatest, but it's what I got today. So you can see kind of where the wear marks are on it from it sliding around and now it's got a little curve to it as all belts do. It's a good little belt. Worked out for what I was doing. Just some light duty stuff. On the belt I carry my Leatherman rebar in my custom Kydex sheath. This one is totally adjustable with Chicago screws all the way around it. Six of them. There are nylon, or no, those are actually neoprene, neoprene washers inside of that. And then I got my uh, Kydex belt loop, so you guys can see that. But, because it's adjustable, you can tighten it or loosen it however you see fit, which is really good. You can also take it apart, completely clean it, put it all back together, which is really nice. But, Cabela's version, Leatherman Rebar. This thing has seen a lot of use. <laughs> There's wear on it. I tried to clean it up a little bit. <laughs> it had a little bit of a battery terminal stuff on it today. So, but I'm really happy with it. It's a really good tool. There's a lot of other really good reviews out there about it. This is a good medium duty. I guess I would classify it as a light duty multi-tool. Um, I think all multi-tools are kind of a medium duty. They're not really heavy duty. They may say heavy duty, but when push comes to shove and you really start beating on them, they'll break. So, but uh, it's a really good multi tool. I do like it. And I do like the Kydex sheath because it just keeps going. You guys can see all these <laughs> wear marks and scratches and beat marks on this thing. Even the screws, you know, they're starting to get loved up on. <laughs> So, it just keeps on going. I'm really happy with it. I'm really glad I made that. So, next, 
I'm about to the camera, would be, yes, I carry a Swiss Army knife. This is a Victorinox uh, Delmont Evolution 28. I'm reviewing this, so this is always in my pocket. This has been riding around with me for a couple weeks now. It is a great multi-tool. Uh, let's go over it real quick. It's got a toothpick. It's got a can opener. Or not a can opener. Corkscrew. Sorry, it's a long day. Corkscrew. This does not come with it, but this is an eyeglass screwdriver. You can buy it aftermarket. Put it in. It does fall out sometimes, though, so you got to really screw it in. Latch it down. This is your all reamer, the sewing thing. It's got the nice sharp edge. Um, what else we got on here? Your Victorinox can opener. It looks like a Wegner, but it's not. It's a Victorinox. Uh, Victorinox bought Wegner. Basically bought them out. And now they're manufacturing what I would call like a hybrid. And I'll show you that in a second. But Victorinox can opener. And this is why I would call it a Wegner. Because if you look at this little hook, it sticks out farther than traditional Victorinoxes. Um, maybe I'll do another video, compare those a little more. But this one does work out fantastic. Also, this is spring locked. So you push on it and it locks and it won't shut. So you gotta push on it pretty hard, as you can see with my finger. But it works out good. Your standard little tweezers. These are Victorinox tweezers. Um got here a uh, fine tip screwdriver and a magnifying glass so I don't know if you guys can see that as I bump the camera again uh, it's pretty good I like it it's I would say it's about seven magnification on the level it takes a little bit to get used to to use but it's a good little tool um, now what we got here we got a saw I'll shut this we got a saw and a file. This file is like metal cut. It's cross cut on both sides. And on the bottom for grooving. It's a metal saw. It is a very, very coarse file. <laughs> if you use this on your fingernails, it will leave like track cut marks. It will leave grooves. <laughs> so this thing is for designed for removing a lot of material. You have also doing a real quick review on this you have your fish scaler well, don't ever think I'll use that because that would be just be nasty in a folder um, the back's not straight so you can't use that as a straight edge there's no measuring marks but I really do like this little groove out here, right here I mean if you had to push this through and hook onto a wire that you needed to pull out of a door panel or something or a string that you needed to pull through that would be very useful. I'm really glad to have that. And there's your hook disgorger right here. So that's it's a pretty useful little tool. It's really polished. Uh, my kids like to mess around with it. But that's about it on that one. So next will be your scissors. I really do, really do like these scissors, except for they're a little bit thinner than your standard Victorinox scissors. But uh, they make up for that and they got an integrated spring as I would call it which is really cool they do kind of move up when you push down this bar right here moves up and away but you get used to it they are serrated and after having a set of serrated scissors I love them oh man you put a string in there and you gotta snip it and when you snip it it actually catches on the serrations and it doesn't slide out as much uh, there's less slide out of your material when you cut. So, really do like those. They're pretty cool. Just wish they were a little thicker, but can't have it all. Your Phillips driver. It's a it's a short stubby version, you know. It's a it's not long, but it's got those nice rounded edges, so it's not going to leave any square bite marks on any type of screw that you're going to do. Um, you can still round screws out and strip them out, so you got to be careful doing that, but it doesn't have that sharp edge that like a, a Leatherman does. Leathermans have that nice sharp 90 degree edge and that leaves marks on some of your screws that you do. So you gotta watch out for that. We got, uh, this is a little wrench. 
Um, I've used it once so far, and it's actually saved the day once. <laughs> I thought I would never use it, but I was uh, deep frying a bunch of hot wings, <laughs> and our basket handle on the pan came loose. And I was like, you know what? I wonder if this would fit it. And it did. It did fit it. But it will not fit like a 10 millimeter or anything like that. It's it's pretty small. I'll try to see what we can do for size comparison. I don't know. I'll have to do another measuring video later. But uh, it's pretty cool. As you can see on the diagram, it shows you how to use it. For this way, for tightening something, it's this way. Flip it over, and that's how you loosen stuff. So it's it's unique. It's it's pretty cool, I guess. It's different. I don't have another tool like that. Now this right here is your knife blade. Now this knife blade's got more of a belly; it arches out than your standard Victorinox. But this is a Victorinox Swiss-made Delmont. So this is actually made in Delmont. Uh, I guess that's another little small town in Switzerland or something. But uh, it's really nice. I find myself using it, and it cuts through paracord fantastically. And I cut a lot and lot and lot of paracord. It's ridiculous. But it's pretty cool. It doesn't have a stamp on the other side, but it does have a stamp right here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's a really nice knife. It does cut very well. So and I don't know. I don't really notice too much of a difference. So this right here is not your standard pen blade. This is a fingernail cleaning tool, and it comes into handy. I mean, I find myself playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I enjoy it but that fingernail file is like somebody took like an engraver it's not like sandpaper but it's like somebody took an engraver and like engraved all over here and you can rub and rub and rub on this thing and it doesn't really do too much damage but it does work on fingernails so and that's the intended purpose I'm messing stuff up here but that's pretty much everything it does not have a spot for your needle like your Swiss Champs and all your other Victorinoxes, it doesn't have a spot for a needle there. So that was one thing I was like, oh man, that sucks. No parcel hook or anything else. So, But it's a nice little multi-tool. Um, it's big for a pocket, but you know what? It's cool. It's unique. So I want to carry it around for a while. We'll see what happens. And it's nice to have carrying options. Last thing I got, oh no, second to last. This right here is my keys. Um, yeah, they're getting pretty big. I'm gonna have to get some stuff, but I got my little paracord key fob, I guess you'd call it. My thing that sticks out of my pocket makes getting my keys out easier. I got my chapstick. This is just some um, regular chapstick. Little Kydex loop I made. Works out really good. And if you want to get it out, you just press it out, put a new stick in. So, or you press it in and it holds the cap while you use your chapstick. So, pretty cool. This right here, I think this is called an Innova. I don't know if it's got, it's got a Ranger band on it. But this is a pretty cool little light. It turns on a lot in your pocket, so you have to watch it. But you just slide your finger. There's no button or anything, but you just slide your finger and it turns it on. Slide it, turn it off. Uh, it's got a couple modes. It's got on, it's got low, and then it's got strobe. And then turn it off, and then it's got on, and you hold your finger on it, and it dims. So, but if you put your finger on it, it doesn't go back up to its brightest setting. You have to turn it back off and then turn it back on. So, I mean, it's a pretty bright light for what it is. I mean, it's pretty comparable to the stream light. <laughs> But it runs off of those 20, I think 2032s or 2016s, two of them. So it's kind of an expensive battery. But it's a pretty cool little keychain light. It comes with this little S beaner clip. So you can clip it on and off your keys. Here's my door unlocker. And here is a little fire steel that I have. I made it, just took a little piece of fire steel and broke it off. Piece of Kydex. This is actually large. Um, silicone remote control car fuel tubing and you just basically pull on it it comes off and then you have your exposed fire steel rod that you can use 
and then when you're done with it you just cover it back up yep. I think this is the smallest one you can get from firesteel.com so it's a pretty cool idea I mean I've never seen anybody else with it um, keys not too much on here uh, field key, car key, house key, parents house key here's a handcuff key every once in a while my kids will get into my handcuffs <laughs> and then they're sitting on a chair for a week and I can't find the key so I put a key on my keychain and it really comes in handy it's a double lock key so there's your double lock feature and right here is a night eyes doohickey it's pretty cool I took uh modified it just a little bit to make it uh, a little more a little more I guess you should say functional for me so I use this as a little pry bar big screwdriver bottle opener wrenches I don't use those I don't use the little measurement it's only two inches so it doesn't really do much for me a little uh, beaner clip and no this has not come off over two and a half months of carrying it but I did take and put a belt sander I took this stuck it on my belt sander and I uh, made 90 degree edges and this is actually my fire striker for my little fire steel so that turned out really good uh, works great so plus you can know you can take this off and then grab your fire steel wherever it's at and then you have all these keys to hold on to while you're striking on it and just that little inch you know I guess I should use this huh I never use it oh looks like it's got uh, yeah millimeters on the back so kind of a pain in the ass though looks like it's about like 22 millimeters or it's like almost an inch I think that's how I designed it yeah it's almost an inch long but that measurement sucks <sighs> but it's a nice little thing opens beer bottles really good <laughs> And, oh, geez, I got this on here. This is just a little tape measure. You can get them at the hardware store. It's, uh, three feet, so. Which is really nice, you know. I guess I could give measurements now, huh? Didn't even realize I had that on there. It's orange. Go figure. But, it's really, basically what I would use it for is I go fishing and I forget a tape measure. And then, hey, guess what? Hey, is that walleye 18 inches? Huh. Or if I'm at the uh, if I'm at the hardware store and I'm wanting to build a box or do something I'm not supposed to that my wife's gonna kill me for, <laughs> and I can kind of do it and not have to talk to her about measuring something, see how big it is. So, but yeah, it's a handy little thing to have. Every once in a while, like, kids get a hold of it, so you gotta watch that. They break these things right and left, but they're cheap, so they're not a bad deal. Last but not least is my cell phone. And I just have an iPhone 5S, and you guys can see it is in a life-proof case. Can't remember the exact model, but it's an okay case. It just really tones down all the sound. Uh, if you play music, play videos, it really drowns it out. It's waterproof, it's got plugs, but most of your sound comes out right here, and your speaker's on the bottom. So it shoots the sound out, bounces in the case, and comes out right here. And if you carry this against your body in your pocket, you can't hear your ringer. So that's kind of a downer. But it is waterproof. And it does work out great. One modification I did make was I took a Zag. Um, it's a Zag dry screen cover. And I stuck that over their little plastic screen cover. And it made it feel like glass. You know, it's not like touching. But it does have a little bit of discoloration where the plastic is bending in and you know lights bending but you know it's protecting my phone for months and months so I can't complain plus I got it for free <laughs> so uh, can't complain about it but it's a good it's a good little phone cover I, I like it it's really thin it's uh, fits in your pocket real well so I really do like it but that's what I carry today you know besides my clothes um, my baseball hat, I guess. So, yeah, you know this guy's in Nebraska and camouflage. <laughs> so, but that's what I got. Uh, let me know what you guys think. All right, later.